Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, subscribe, share, and support. You may subscribe wherever you are hearing this recording. Hopefully, you're hearing with ears that hear. You may share the very words of God that you hear or the link to wherever you found it with your friends, with strangers, with loved ones, and hopefully with enemies. Finally, you may support by heading over to patreon.com slash tawahado, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash tawahado, and or subscribing to the newsletter, aksum.substack.com, a-k-s-u-m dot substack dot com. We are in the concluding chapter of the scroll of Revelation, the scroll of Apocalypse, the scroll of uncovering. It's been fun. It's been fun. By the culmination of this episode, we will have gone through all our what are called all of what are called the associate deacon readings according to the is right liturgical rubric. So the number two deacon reads James, whom I have called Jacob for reasons of the Hebrew Bible. You could go back and listen to those episodes. The two letters of Peter, the three letters of John, and this scroll of apocalypse that we're going through now. So the next goal then is to go through the Pauline corpus, which begins in Romans, and I plan to go through it canonically. Although I think I, I may have some um, some of those kind of random episodes that I've put before we got into the scroll of Jacob slash James. But in any event, we'll go through the Pauline corpus, and if the Lord wills, we'll finish that and move on to the Acts of the Apostles and move on to the Gospels. If we still have time, then we'll hit the Hebrew Bible until the Lord comes again. And the coming of the Lord is something that is always on the minds, that is to say, the hearts of the prophets. It's always on my mind or my heart as well. And it is a major motif of this chapter, which we'll get into. Remember, the originals do not have verses, do not have chapters, but we are not the original. We just strive to be. Verses 1 to 7 of Revelation 22. And we're reading from the King James Version. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants, his slaves, shall serve him, shall slave for him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his slaves, his servants, his bondservants, the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. It's very interesting, you know, the Bible has its own lexicon, and when you hear the Bible say something to the effect of the nations, don't go interpreting it the way that you would interpret that in the English of your time and your day. Instead, you have to interpret it with the language of the Bible itself. And in the language of the Bible, the nation is Israel. The nations are the Gentiles. They're the other. They're the outsider. The people are Israel. The peoples, plural, are the Gentiles, the Greeks, the barbarians, the Scythians, and this, that, and a third. So keep that in mind that when it says that this tree of life yielding all manner of fruit, 
are for the it, these fruit and the tree are for the healing of the nations it's the inclusion of everyone else the rest of humanity into the salvation of god alongside the so-called chosen people or the so-called chosen nation you have all nations you have all peoples which has been a great motif of the scroll of revelation as we've been going through it we see this repetition of what was in the last chapter and remember i began today by telling you that the there are no chapters, but in the last chapter, according to us, not according to the Bible, God was said to be the only light needed. And so you don't need a sun, you don't need a candle or anything like that. Certainly not electricity, which comes much later, because God's light is enough. It is sufficient. It's all we need, and we need nothing more. There will be no more accursed people We'll see when we get into Galatians, and we see it all over the place, but curses are a big part of the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. And here, it's no more time for cursing at the end. It's just the blessed presence of God, and you get to drink from the river of the water of life. And here in the KJV, it says sayings, but when you go pull out a Mount's interlinear text or look at the original Greek, the word is logos, and the logos is the word. So these are words. And if you keep his words, which are his instructions, his commandments, his statutes, what we see in Psalm 118 slash 119, depending on your version of the Psalms, if you keep these words, you will be blessed. And he's coming soon, but that's TBD. It's to be determined. It's not for you to know when he's coming, only that he's coming and that he's coming quickly. Well, what is quickly to God? Well, if a year is different on Mercury than it is on Mars, on Earth than it is on Jupiter or Saturn or Pluto for that matter, what is a year to God? What is a day to God? What is slowness? What is quickness to God? These are questions you have to ask yourself, but don't dwell on them too much or you'll get stuck into medieval scholasticism and start telling me, Deacon Henoch, this is how many angels I finally calculated. This is how many angels could dance on the tip of a nail. Verses 8 to 21. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, thy fellow slave, thy fellow bond servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings, the words, the logos of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the words of the prophecy of this book. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this scroll. For the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whoever, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this scroll. 
And if any man shall take away from the words of the scroll of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the scroll of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this scroll. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It's an incredible passage. The idea of his eminence, of his proximity, his nearness to our vicinity. It's all over there. Come is repeated several times to emphasize that his judgment is coming. Those who worship God are those who keep his words, who keep the words written in the scroll transcribed in this book. And it is to those people and the people trying to become like those people that we are given this liturgical formula at the end. The charis, the unfettered gift, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which I wish is with all of those of you, especially those of you who heard the entire scroll of Revelation, and especially those of you who go further to keep the words of the Apocalypse.